uh, which, I mean, uh, does give you some, you know, earlier skirmishing here. It's it's a decently enough safe line, but you have options like a GP now uh, can really be problematic for... Uh, there you go, a cannon can also be very problematic for an Aatrox early on into the game. And now with cannon as your flank option for the rest, like, Astralis just have, like, the strongest 5v5 comp you can get. It's like top three 5v5s that are on the market nowadays. So in the mid lane there, Nuketuck putting a lot of damage onto Humanoid, pushing him out. Now Alyoya moves his way up north. This minion wave will crash under the tower. Flash available for White Knight. No access to the slicing maelstrom just yet. There's even a teleport being committed Okay. Here. Minion wave is slowly starting to be chipped away. Three minions left for the, the Astralis top laner. Gold card, the Javelin she misses! misses spear. The Javelin misses a stunned target! Alyoya and Humanoid are not on the same page. Here comes Zansara! It's going to be a devastating charge onto Humanoid. Alyoya will get into Cougar form and get out, and Astralis cannot find anything in reply. And that Zanzara's was... just going to use some pressure on bot and permit to pick that one up. Did you say fake little wind wall? Yeah. <laughs> Isn't it more effective than wind wall? It's like larger area, it moves with you. Not wow. off wind wall. I'm going to use that one myself. Humanoid, destiny available. Is he going to use the gate? Yes, he is. Round two, gold card, javelin toss, slicing maelstrom. White Knight will be able to counter kill, but the skill shots landed. The knockoff wind wall helping out Jeskla. The tower taking down. Down, promise you. Zanzara's here. Out. Armut is looking for Jeskla. Manages to use that darkened blade. Flashed away from. Now Armut's going to be the next target. He turns it back around with the Q, and it ends up being a two for two. All right. So one for one on the top side, one for one down bottom side. A TP comes out from Armut as well. That's why we wanted the play to happen for Mad Lines before Kennen hit level six, yes. right? And uh, he didn't have the flash that time, but he had his ultimate, so it was enough to trade evenly. Oh, Jeskla, get back here. You're kidding, I'm you're kidding. Armut's gonna be able to pick this one up. No, not just yet. There we go, one or two last autos. And he even committed the ultimate to that one. Three kills to Mad Tower against Armut's Aatrox. Zanzara got that ultimate available. You called it out just a few moments ago and uh, it's going to be available for this engage. Does he pull the trigger? Dredge line goes down to Promise Q. The ultimate comes out and no fight. I was building that one up. I thought they were going to go for it. Instead, Mad Lions. They extend that goal. If he can devastate Mad Lions, I am going to take this brief moment. That missed coordination on a composition like Mad Lions is oh, nerve-wracking. that's a good one. This one works out. Hexplash, Dredge line. Zanzara gets taken. I think it was the Ignite that burned him down while it worked distance <laughs> of draft, right? Where we're not sure about the Aatrox and the level of execution required to make this work is higher than what the Astralis composition is doing. But it is very fair to say, plus 1,500 gold, this Rift Herald should get a couple of plates and help get out of here, Carzy. Boot Kazi out of dodge. See, that, that's actually really cute because, uh, so the turret plate money will still go to El Yoya because he was the one to place the Herald, but that put Karzi out of range to get the bonus gold from that turret. So uh, nice little move there from the MSI champion. And what I would like to say is <laughs> that I was not ready for. That I was not ready for. Promise Q, of course, has that under his belt. And now Promise Q running for his life. Humanoid will teleport into the fray and get jumped on. There's so much damage coming out from Jessla. Stepping forward, White Knight with a slicing maelstrom. Kazi stays alive for now and no killer instinct available to him. We're talking about money just a moment or two ago. Can be hugely influential. Ooh, are they gonna look for a play now onto White Knight? No ultimate to save himself under the tower, no flash either, and a big minion wave building up. That's the TP from Humanoid. Mad Lions are gonna run this play over and over again. There's no flash, there's no ultimate. This little electric hamster will be sent back to the fountain. It will also secure the first tower of the game. And while that is going on, Nuketuck is putting some pressure top, but the multi-man stack can continue the siege if Mad Lions want to. Yes, they can. I mean, uh, one more time I have it's to point out. It's a very, very big advantage from Mad Lions to be playing from. Plus, there's a level advantage here. Armut's going to chase down White Knight. Yeah, I mean, Armut's going to go for this Does he win this fight? White Knight's isolated. He absolutely wins this fight. It's level 12 to level 11. White Knight's ultimate does absolutely nothing. He's just going to get chased all the way down this bottom lane. And Armut's going to laugh at him. Yeah, Zanzara's going to try to do something in return. The gold card comes up. That buys a couple extra seconds. Nuketuck, come on, protect. Plus, Dissonance will help out. And 
Zanzar is able to run down Humanoid. Yeah, Cadrel, Cadrel. Yeah, uh, we got need the weak side police. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> good lord. Promiscue's gonna jump in onto Kazi. He's gonna use the Wild Rush away as quickly as possible. Zanzar is going low, burning Ignite, taking him down just as the next target. He's been jumped on and zoned away. Nuketuck has got the Shockwave available. And the Javelin Toss will not quite find its target, so Mad Lions find themselves two quick kills. Yep, nice <laughs> lane tower. Armu went from, you know, a questionable pick in draft, we thought, now sitting 2-0-2, two, two, having a big impact in a lot of these skirmishes, and that's exactly what Mad Lions, like, uh, Nidalee, Kai'Sa, Twist of Fate, like, Cannon can destroy those champions. If he gets in the back line with a flash, he has Ghosty, a very different beast attack. Yeah, you need to team fight with this comp. If you never get to team fight and you're too far behind when you have to team fight, it's problematic. Astralis, whoo, that jabbed a little early. We'll sneak away a dragon. That is a huge advantage but for them. Here's the thing, apart. right? Is look at how Mad Lions are playing it. Right? Astralis, They're play the side lanes, play the map use the advantages you've accrued and don't step into your opponent's strengths. Right? Yeah, and, and now that they've taken down this inner turret, uh, we're, Baron's gonna Baron have some light on it and also maybe get that top tower. That top tower is very low, get a little bit of gold somewhere. Zanzara walks in, again, very similar trade to the one we saw in last game. It's like, are there any camps I can take? No, well, unfortunately. Yeah, at the very least, if they kill him, he survives for 30 seconds and Mad Lions get their nexus. So. And, and that was the play you were talking about where if all the uh -oh, pressure, Humanoid steps too far forward, gold card goes up by some time. Defensive flash away, but Humanoid, he's too far forward. He did not yet die in the side lane. Humanoid gets out with his life. Bates Astralis all the way forward. The slicing Maelstrom does little, does nothing, does not bother the man. Lions, but that shockwave was big. Imagine there was not a 10,000 no gold difference. Humanoid. Go buy a lottery ticket. The wall you can hop over easily with something like Packram, as opposed to if Hecarim's pushing for blue side, he has to go all the way through that river. You know, and you can get turned on very easily. I Still, didn't expect it this quick. I didn't yeah. expect it this quick. Mad Lions realizing this a little. They push forward. Kaiser will see Zanzara. Humanoid stepping forward. The dredge line goes right between Zanzara and Promise Q. Shockwave goes backwards. Humanoid's able to escape it thanks to the rocket belt. Teleport comes Arzy? inside the pit. White Knight is locked inside the pit. He flashes over the wall. He's now rejoined his team. This is one of the most awkward setups I have seen. But Astralis stop the Baron. The ward got placed. The control ward got placed. So Armut doesn't know that he was spotted over there. Astralis know he's in that position. Interesting. But what can they do with that information? They're aware that there's a split. Destiny's available for Humanoid. He's now casting information's up. Flash over the wall here from Humanoid. Kaiser. That's the damage they're onto Zanzara. Promise Q's locked. Left alone without the rest of the team. Astralis are running. Karzy! From Karzy! The double kill for the Kaiser. Continues to chase down. He's right. a madman! The triple. Looking for the Quadra. Just the gonna block some damage as Armut that manages to pick up the fourth kill of the fight. Mad Lions using their lead and their advantage to squash his entire body just to convince Astralis to stick around in that fight and work wonders. I mean, it is true what you were saying just before the fight played out into that. Champion is being run down. <laughs> Alioria is gonna be able to step forward and come on, protect. We'll buy some time. Kaiser holds on to that dredge line. The third Drake is picked up. He has advantage. 650 gold bounty, by the way. He's never going to die. 650 gold bounty for Kazi. He's got the hurricane completed. This okay. is the teleport coming in from White Knight. Lightning rush forward, slicing Maelstrom. Flash forward. Whoa. Kazi jumps onto the back line. He buys some time thanks to the stopwatch. The unstoppable onslaught comes up. That by time. Finally, Kazi goes down, but it doesn't matter. Smack him with a wallet. Mad Lions ace Astralis. Armut with the triple kill. They take down the inhibitor and they set their sights on the next. Yeah, that's a Karzy play if I've ever seen it. He's getting dove by, he's getting flanked. He says, I am going straight into the middle of all five players. He goes down at the end, but his sacrifice was not in vain. Mad Lions completely dismantle Astralis from beginning to end, and they're gonna take a game this season. I, <laughs> yeah, I got so pressure. I usually don't do these moments where Trevor's like, you got this, you got this. And I failed at the final moment. Oh. Unlike Mad Lions. What you didn't see, what you didn't see, because <laughs> you're obviously watching the game. I'm pointing at Ender saying, you take the win moment. You take the win moment. Oh, look, Mad Lions had such a huge advantage. They, they committed once they got their Baron. I think he was very, very clear.